My research is at the moment is on popular culture in the 18th century and in particular on collections, popular collections of poetry and prose called miscellanies. My research this year has been taken two forms. One is a scholarly project, it's a digital database of the contents of these miscellanies and that's funded by the Lieberhume Trust and that's primarily going to be of interest to scholars who want to know more about what was in these books. But as I've been compiling this database it seemed to me increasingly important that popular culture should be put back into popular context. What's the point of having all these books which are about being fun, about being entertained, but only existing as a database for people to put in their footnotes or to use as the basis for scholarly articles? So during the course of this year, I've been running a public engagement project funded by the British Academy as part of a mid-career fellowship which is called Bringing Books Home, and it's really about exploring the public-facing potential of this kind of scholarly work and thinking about how the ways in which people use books in the past might relate to how we use books now or the things or forms of entertainment now. And that's taken the form of some work, a project in a primary school, some secondary school talks, making a couple of radio programmes and doing a whole series of site-specific performances in collaboration with some musicians which are about exploring the potential of these books, what happens if you try to perform them for a 21st century audience. One of the things that's remarkable about speaking to a wider public is that you can't in any way anticipate the kinds of things they're going to get out of your work. So although we talk about pathways to impact and how our research will affect people, you can't know until it happens. So I've had all sorts of responses to the kinds of things I've done, ranging from this little football crazy boy who said, I never liked literacy before, but this is really fun, which in some ways is quite predictable. And then another un unanticipated consequence of what I've been doing is that I did a program on CBC, um, on Canadian radio, about my 18th century research. And I got an email from a man who said, Dear Dr. Williams, I don't normally write to people, but I was listening to the Drive Time program and I had studied 18th century literature in Oxford 20 years ago and now I've spent the rest of my career in IT and it was so lovely to hear about that. So we got into contact and he has a series of database construction companies and he's now doing the database construction for my digital project for free because it inspired him to put to give something back and to use his expertise in an academic context and he'll use the work he's doing on developing a database of 18th century poetic collections as what's called a stretch test for his corporate clients. So he'll be able to say, look, I made this work on all these weird 18th century books so I can make it work for your aeroplanes. And who, who could have known that that was going to happen? The public engagement work I've done has fed back, again, in, in unanticipated ways. I couldn't have really known the directions it was going to take me. So one of the things that's happened is that in exploring the public or entertainment-based aspects of my work, I've become more and more interested in how 18th century audiences and readers used books. So I'm now going to write a monograph about how people used books and read out loud from them and used them in their homes. And I wouldn't have done that if I hadn't already gone halfway down the road of trying to turn these books into spectacles and into programmes for modern audiences. Another way in which it's affected my research is that you can't really know what how something is for people until you've performed it sometimes. So to give an example of that, we performed at the York Early Music Festival and took a programme of Yorkshire poems and Yorkshire songs that probably haven't been sung since they were printed in 1750-something. And we sang them in York, and there was one song about Yarn, which is a little town um, in Stockton on Tees, I think. And we sung this song, and it's a very conventional pastoral song which is all about the beauties of the town. And there's one line in it which says, the goddess Minerva has here her seat. And everyone in the audience laughed at this ridiculous idea that's so high blown and hyperbolic that a goddess should be living in Yarm. And of course I realized they probably did that at the time. 18th century audiences probably laughed at the mismatch between the idealized description and what they were living through themselves. And I, it just didn't occur to me that it might have been funny or ironic in that kind of way until we performed it. Public-facing work enables us to put the humanity back into humanities and to tell stories about people as well as about ideas.